Hey everybody, how's it going? Okay, I am now back from the late night with the devil showing that I just finished watching and uh, just wanted to get my thoughts down while they were still fresh. So let's get into it. Okay, so Late Night with the Devil. Um, first thoughts. I went into it with really high hopes because of all the reviews I've been hearing. Um, the audience score was pretty good. The critics seemed to love it. Um, I came out of it, at the end of it, thinking, well, I wouldn't say I was disappointed, but I did feel like it was lacking that punch I was expecting, you know, of this, wow, groundbreaking thing. But it was a neat movie. It was well done, you know, as far as like a found footage style of movie goes. Um, again, I don't want to give up any spoilers or anything like that. So my initial thoughts going in were this movie is going to be something else right i was hoping it was going to be scary but then i heard that it's not supposed to be scary um, again i had it built up pretty heavy in my mind here that it was going to be amazing so it kind of had high standards coming in and that was kind of unavoidable because almost every review i had seen was uh, very positive and uh, by the end of the movie when i saw it i thought it was uh pretty well done and it was fun it, it's like a it's kind of like in that found footage uh, realm essentially so uh, it was neat um, no it was not scary like a lot of people were saying I didn't find it to be uh, to be scary um, it was an interesting story but I will say it definitely didn't pack that heavy punch that I thought it was going to unfortunately so for me yeah, I'm not sure exactly what I would have given it. I guess for being creative and uh, kind of artsy and different, you know, um, I give it a little bit more credit in that respect. But as far as something that like blew me away and it was uh, so good, and, you know, a lot of the reviews I saw were, were, oh, this movie is so, so good. There isn't anything wrong with it. It's flawless. It's perfect. And I'm like, you're on drugs. You know, like, what are you talking about? <laughs> not that it's not good because it is but it's I don't know if it's perfect it, it's a story it's something um, we've sort of seen before with uh, with other movies in terms of you know when it, it's sort of like a possession thing you know it's along those lines anyway from the way the trailers go but I felt like it was still kind of stuff we had seen before um, it was just done in, you know, this talk show format. And they did a great job capturing that 70s feel. You know, everybody looked like they were dressed, like, really well for the time. You know, like, it just it matched perfectly. There's a few characters that looked like they could have walked off the set of Halloween, you know. And uh, a lot of the uh, goofy 70s designs and stuff, they really nailed that. And they nailed the... Uh, the quality of the production had that feel. David Dasmalshian, I believe you say it, uh, he was very good in it. I thought he did a great job in his first major leading role that, that I've seen him in anyway. Uh, did a good job, you know. Um, but I guess overall I'm a little underwhelmed because again I went in with high expectations. Usually when I go in with high expectations like that it's either it's going to hit and I'm going to kind of agree or it's going to miss. And in this case, for me, it was a little little underwhelming, I would say. Again, not a bad uh, movie, the way it's put together. But I don't know if it's really my cup of tea or not, because it just didn't get me that excited. I like stuff that really scares you, you know. And I like interesting stories, too. And this was different, so I do give it, uh, give it credit for that. But I'd probably give this one, out of 10, I'd probably give it maybe a 7. Like for enjoyability and stuff and what I prefer, I might go a little under, but the fact that it's it's different and it was fairly well made, although I do prefer practical effects a lot more, there were a few effects here and there that were a little, um, a 
little over the top, I guess. But for the most part, it was pretty good. One, I am a little surprised because I was expecting to enjoy it a little more. I saw it with my 13-year-old daughter. She was interested in seeing it as well. And uh, she was sort of sort of under the same impression as well. Like her, the first number she threw out was six. So I don't think she was uh, too impressed by it either. It didn't say it was terrible, but it was kind of, it was a little confusing. The ending's a little, a little different, again, without giving anything away. Uh, yeah, I thought it was a little bit confusing, a little bit hard to follow exactly uh, what really went down at the end there. You'll see what I mean when you see it, but uh, it's definitely something I think that's worth seeing or worth checking out. I would probably wait until it is on Shutter, you know, and streaming. That's probably better um, than you know racing out to the theater to see it. I was hoping there'd be some really cool, you know, theater-like feels with, uh, uh, for instance, like with Evil Dead Rise when that came out last year in the theater. The sound of that, you know, when when they're when he's playing the, the record there, and he's like, Kanda, you know, the, the freaking wall shook in the theater. It was like, you know, you had goosebumps. It was just like, oh man, like it packed a punch, you know? This didn't really have that kind of feel. Uh, I was hoping there would be some of those parts that really got the old spine tingling uh, feeling, right? But, uh, but I was thinking perhaps that might not happen because I, I did see a few reviews where people were saying, you know, it's good, but it's not scary. And I would have to agree with that. It's it's pretty good, but it's not uh, it's not really scary, not really my kind of thing so much. I can't see me buying this one or owning it. I I, I, I don't think. But uh, I do give it respect for originality and um, again, well made. It just it looked like something right out of the seventies, and the acting is pretty good in it too. I didn't I didn't really uh, notice anything with anyone that uh, took me out of the story which is always a sign of terrible acting if you ask me is when you're when you really notice somebody's acting then it's not really acting right but um yeah this this was pretty good overall but i was a little underwhelmed from where i thought like i was hoping i was getting at least an eight eight and a half and i would say this was yeah just probably just barely a seven for me but again I, it doesn't mean i wouldn't check it out so by all means if you guys want to see it check it out but I would honestly wait until it's on Shutter. I believe it's April 19th it drops. So that's just my two cents on it and uh, just how I sort of felt coming out of that one. Okay, and another movie that I saw recently, you may have already guessed, not only because I told you I was going to be seeing it, but you may have noticed this funky little Slimer popcorn bowl that I have sitting here. Yes, I saw the new Ghostbusters Frozen Empire film. Uh, this is the Slimer popcorn bucket I decided to pick up. Apparently they had an Ecto-1 as well that lit up and everything. Long gone by the time I got there. And I mean, I went to a 7 o'clock Friday show, so it was pretty early on. So they must have sold out very quickly. I normally would have went to the sneak preview probably the, the Thursday night, but uh, my family went with me for this one, so I sort of got to pick their brains a little bit on what they thought of it by the end. Um, all of us had seen, you know, Afterlife leading up to it and everything as well, so we were all prepared to check it out. Um, just briefly with Frozen Empire, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun movie, it was entertaining, it was a good time. Definitely some solid nostalgia in it. Um, yeah, it had, it had its pros and cons. Um, but overall, I, I did think it was it was pretty good. You know, the uh, the story's interesting. It sort of keeps that feeling going. I mean, if I was to compare it to Afterlife, I would say I do prefer Afterlife a, a little bit. Uh, I felt like it was a little bit better. The whole uh, Egon angle was uh, awesome. You know, I, I really enjoyed that. So I would say it didn't quite meet those expectations but it, again it was still entertaining it had some some good throwback stuff there's a few nods to uh to the real ghostbusters cartoon that I, you know, I watched as a kid and there's a character in there that looks remarkably like egon did in that uh series so that's kind of cool uh don't want to give anything away of course if you haven't seen it but uh 
it's a fun movie and I would say it was worth watching. I'd probably give that one about a seven and a half which is kind of where I put Afterlife. I might have given Afterlife an eight, I think, when it dropped or somewhere around there. I feel like it's, like I said, just a smidge better, but Frozen Empire was not bad. It was definitely an entertaining movie. I mean, it would have been cool to have maybe a little bit more Paul Rudd, a little more dialogue there and stuff uh, for him. He's, he's always a blast. And I did feel like there were a lot of characters in that movie as well, so it's hard to get them all, you know, uh, in there and with enough time. Um, and there were some scenes where I, they pretty much had the viewfinder just filled with uh, all these characters. And I thought, how do you even keep up to so many? But um, but again, overall, I did think it was pretty cool. I like my popcorn bucket. There are a bunch of uh, different kinds out there too, I didn't realize, but I see Cinemark in the States, which we do not have here in Canada, had their own Slimer. Uh, that doesn't have these little arms that are stuck to the side. They actually come out and they're holding a popcorn container. Uh, my buddy Boogeyman Ben actually uh, got one of those. So those are pretty uh, pretty sweet looking. I believe Cinemark was the same company that did the Scream Ghostface uh, um, swag, if you will, when that dropped. I never did see any here for the Scream films here in Canada. So I was kind of pumped to see that they had a few of these kicking around when I got up there so I thought yeah, I'd give it a give it a go I thought it was pretty neat just a little spud check out the butt on this guy <laughs> it's crazy he's got more dimples on this butt than there is dimples on like a golf ball it's crazy like look at that dumper ridiculous anyway I just thought it was a cute little uh, cute little spud very cool but it's interesting to see how different it is from theater to theater, uh, theater chain, I should say. I don't mean just like individual theaters, but you, you know what I'm saying. Here in Canada, this is how the uh, Slimer looks, at least through landmark cinemas. Anyway, that's where uh, my hometown one is. But pretty cool. I thought it was worth uh, giving it a try. You know, I like the collectible stuff. I'm a, I'm a nerd, as you know. And I don't get a lot of stuff like that because, you know, I don't have a lot of room to display them all, but I thought I would go for it with the slime. So anyway, yeah, Frozen Empire, definitely worth checking out, I would say. A fun movie. I still had a good time enjoying it and everything. I would say, again, though, just a little under Afterlife. So if you liked Afterlife, you'll probably like this one, but I would, I would guess that you'll probably prefer Afterlife if you're anything like me. But... Um, yeah, overall, it was it was a fun movie, and it's a decent cast, and uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I would have said, yeah, seven and a half. That's kind of how my kids felt about it. And my 15-year-old, he was uh, he was right in between seven and eight, so he pretty much settled where I did on seven and a half, and my daughter was around the same. And we all pretty much agreed that we thought Afterlife was a smidge better to some extent. Uh, now, my wife was a, a little different entirely on that one. Now, she liked Afterlife quite a bit, thought it was pretty good. And uh, for Frozen Empire, she wasn't big on it. She came out of there thinking maybe a five, you know, something like that. So I was a little surprised between, you know, maybe five and six for her at best. But uh, she came out of there and she was just talking about Dune 2 and say, oh, Dune 2 is so much better. We actually saw it Dune 2 just the, the prior week to uh, Frozen Empire. And uh, yeah, Dune 2 is cool. It's a cool movie. You know, like I checked out the um, the remake Dune from 2021 or is maybe 2022. I forget, but I hadn't seen it. So I checked it out the day before we went to the theater to go and watch it because she was all pumped to see it. I thought it was fun. I thought it was like a, it was kind of like chapter two of, you know, the same story. It flowed for me, although it flowed very, very slowly. I thought the movies were, were a lot longer than they needed to be, but uh, entertaining nonetheless, but still not my kind of, it's not my kind of jam, you know, like good movie. Yes. But is it something I want to watch over and over? Not, not really. And it's not because it's not good. It's just because it's just not my thing. You know what I mean? So she liked Dune 2 a lot more than Frozen Empire, so maybe some of you might not like it as much. I don't know. But again, you've seen a, a zillion uh, reviews, I'm sure, by now. I just was 
giving my two cents basically. All right, so next up, I have a Freight Rags pickup that's been sitting here for a little bit, but I'm waiting to open up. Excited I got this sucker. I haven't got a whole lot of stuff this year. I'm trying to cut back a bit. The collection's pretty big and you know, uh, none of this stuff is cheap, of course, but uh, I had some points saved up with Fright Rags and I was able to get this uh, hoodie that I have in here at a pretty good price. So let's check this thing out, open it up and see what we got. Okay, so inside we have a postcard ad for Screenbox. Screenbox, free for 30 days. Check out the all new Screenbox on us with over a thousand spine chilling tales at your fingertips. Very cool. And as always, we've got the toxic waste candy, watermelon this time. Uh, we have a card, Zombie vs. Shark, right here with Fright Film Facts. The actor scheduled to play the underwater zombie got sick at the last minute and had to be replaced by the shark's trainer. So that is the shark trainer there. I think I have this exact card somewhere from Fright Rags already. Oh, and awesome, we have a Pasco sticker from the original Pet Cemetery from 1989. This movie was freaking scary. I really enjoyed this one. That was a cool sticker. Cool, cool. Okay, and moving on to the hoodie. Okay, first thing I have noticed is the red is a lot more red than I thought it would be. I thought it was more of sort of a wine colored red. Very nice though. I have one other pullover from Fright Rags, which is the green silver shamrock novelties one. I love that one. And I wanted to get another one because I love this design. It looks so cool. Check it out. George A. Romero's Dawn of the Dead. The OG. Definitely a much brighter red than I thought. Looks really good though. And I went ahead and got a double XL for this size. Not because the XL I have in the Silver Shamrock isn't a good size, because it is. It's just I wanted one that was even baggier. It's a great looking hoodie. I love it. Okay, and last thing I wanted to get into is I was able to finally get my hands on a Evil Dead Rise Steelbook, as you can see right here. It finally came in. Now, the reason I got this, you may have guessed if you've been paying attention to some of my other videos, I got this so I could have Alyssa Sutherland sign this for me when I meet her at the Calgary Horror Con this year. She is going to be there. And she's right on the cover here, of course, so I thought it'd be very cool to have her autograph on the steelbook. Super cool. Um, that's why I picked this one up. Now, this one is um, one that did come from the UK, so this is a Region B. However, because it is a 4K Ultra HD title, those aren't region locked anyway, so it really isn't going to make any difference. I can watch it right here, and it was a way that I could still get this awesome steelbook. So, looking forward to having her sign this. This is awesome. Okay, and speaking of Steelbook, you might remember that I was talking about the Scream Steelbook and whether or not I should have the cast of Scream sign that or maybe sign that really cool poster that I showed you guys from Mariano Matos uh, in that previous video I did. The thing is with the Steelbook, when I was first thinking about it, I thought for some reason the Steelbook I was thinking of was the Scream 5 Steelbook. And it's probably because it came out around the same time the Scream Steelbook dropped. I'm sure they were like one after another, but for some reason I was thinking the front of that Steelbook had Ghostface on it with the knife and the, that Scream 5, as you know, uh, it's not the original. The original is, is the knife blade with Ghostface, uh, sort of a reflection on the knife. It's still a cool looking Steelbook, don't get me wrong, but I was originally picturing the other one in my head when I was considering it and I thought, yeah, that looks pretty cool. But um, the more I thought about the poster, I, the more I thought it was the right way to go. I mean, the original poster doesn't have everyone's name on it anyway, and you know, it's pretty much just Drew Barrymore on the front. So there's a lot of uh, cast members that aren't really featured there anyway that I would be having signing if uh, I had an original copy of the poster. So I thought, why not just get this one signed? It's really, really cool. It looks great in a frame as well. I went out and I got a really nice frame. And I tried it on my Scream 6 poster. Here's a look at it in the frame here. I think this thing looks so badass in the frame. Sorry about the reflection. It's a little hard to uh, 
find the right lighting around here so you can get a really good look at it. But I think it's going to look great in one of these frames, all signed and everything. Um, so that's definitely what I'm going to be bringing there to have everyone sign. Okay, and lastly, speaking of things to have signed, there was another guest recently announced that had me awfully excited to hear, and that is none other than the amazing and talented Lou Diamond Phillips. He is going to be coming to the Calgary Expo in April as well. Um, I see they have him paired with Dylan McDermott to do sort of a Young Guns uh, type of angle. Anyway, I love Lou Diamond Phillips, awesome actor, I love the Young Guns films, um, a lot of stuff he's done, he's done La Bamba of course, but probably my all-time favorite he has done is a movie called The First Power. Now, I've talked about The First Power before, several times actually, it is one of my favorites. So very exciting news and I have a couple of really cool things to get signed for the first power that I want to show you in another video so I have a little bit more time to go over it with you because it is very cool. So that is what will be happening in the next video for sure there as well as some uh, other pickups I, I have coming for a few other topics that I would like to cover soon that I'm not going to get into yet but I do have some cool stuff coming up on the channel real soon. So as always, thank you so much for watching and we will see you again for another one soon. Take care guys.